Hoani Lambert has resigned from his role as Deputy Chief Executive of Oranga Tamariki, but he says it's not in protest at his Chief Executive. The head of Oranga Tamariki, Gronya Moss, has come under fire for her role in uplifting Māori babies from their whānau. She fronted media a short time ago after appearing before the Waitangi Tribunal, facing questions over whether her deputy resigned because of her. Hoani Lambert joins me now. Kia ora, Mr Lambert. Why are you moving on? Um, I'm a professional public servant. Um, I've been with Oranga Tamariki for four years. Um, uh, another opportunity presented itself with the Department of Internal Affairs and I was lucky enough to secure that role. So what part has Gronya Moss paid in your departure? Uh, none at all. So, you know, I was very grateful to Gronya, who gave me my first opportunity to be a Deputy Chief Executive in a government department. Um, in that time, we've established two treaty units. We have begun the process of setting up strategic relationships with iwi and Māori organisations. I've also been given the privilege of establishing our first transition service supporting young people who have spent a significant amount of their time in state care. And right across uh, the four years with her, I've been very grateful to her for the opportunities that she's given me. Is she up for the top job? Up to it? I think she is, and I think she demonstrated that again today in the Waitangi Tribunal. There's why no do doubt. you think, why do you think, sorry to interrupt, why do you think That's she right. is up to the job when there have been a number of reports which seem to indicate that OT is failing miserably? Why is she the right person to lead this agency on? So I can only talk to what I've experienced as one of the people that report to her. Um, you know, from the time that I started with Oranga Tamariki, I saw the nature of the challenge that was presented to us. We were essentially being asked to try and transform a system while still trying to run a system that was seriously suboptimal in the first place. What you saw in Hastings was absolutely unacceptable. However, that was the organisation that we inherited. You mean taking Māori babies, snatching Māori baby from their whānau? That's right, uh, and doing that without notice, using Section 78 in a way that uh, was not, um, you know, proper for particularly whānau Māori, uh, for any family really in New Zealand. Um, we've learnt from that. We and put in place measures immediately to make sure that there was greater scrutiny around those applications and at the same time part of my job was to make sure that we continued with the job of transforming the system and that is what I've been trying to do over the last four years and uh, despite the cases, the reviews, I feel that we have made some, some ground as an agency. But those mistakes that you talk about, the removing Māori babies from their families without notice uplifts as they're known, they happened on Gronya Moss's watch. They did, um, but she inherited a system. Uh, she inherited a series of policies. She uh, came in on the back of an expert advisory panel, which was accepted by the then government as being the focus, which in no way talked about Section 7AA or the treaty. Uh, so, you know, the, the hand we were dealt when we first stood up in, as an agency uh, wasn't one that was going to be easy to sort out. And in that time, Gronya has tried her very best with her leadership team, my colleagues, to, to make the changes necessary. Given that Māori and their families are overrepresented in Oranga Tamariki in terms of being in care, would it be better to have a Māori person at the head of Oranga Tamariki? So I get asked that question a lot and I think uh, we need to make sure that we have leaders in the public service who are able to discharge the responsibilities of those departments. I know that Peter Hughes, the Public Service Commissioner, is focusing more and more on diversity across the public sector. We have more women. But what do you think? Say, what do you think? You're a Māori man in a senior position at Oranga Tamariki. You would be capable of being the boss there, wouldn't you? And all things being equal, if there is a choice of people with the same skills, should it be a Māori person that leaves Oranga Tamariki into the agency that it is supposed to become? So I'm Māori, Gronya's not. I don't think that I am capable of running this agency. Um, I might be in maybe 10 years' time, but... It's certainly not the role that I think that I would be able to discharge at the moment. So I think it's very much about the individual skills of the people that you're thinking about. I do like the fact that 
knowledge of te reo moana tikanga is becoming incredibly important. Um, I don't have the reo. I've been colonised, um, as a lot of Māori have, so that's a journey that I need to work on uh, myself. Um, but being Māori, I do think, is an important attribute, but I don't think can be the sole attribute for such an important role as this one. Are there enough senior Māori at Oranga Tamariki? Uh, it's hard to know what is going to be enough. I mean, we have three Māori on the leadership team. I know there's been some critique around our cultural capability as individuals, which you know, I found quite um, challenging. Um, I was in the Waitangi Tribunal for four hours and being questioned around my knowledge of the video, essentially you know, being questioned as to how Māori I am. Um, you know, that was quite a challenging experience to go through. Probably not a great advertisement for becoming a senior public servant if you're Māori, to be quite honest, but that's the challenge that I have accepted together with a number of Māori in the public service. And it's great to see so many Māori coming through the ranks, a lot more than I saw when I started on this journey four years ago. So... Do you think that the environment for senior Māori is hostile in in the public service? I don't think it's hostile, but I do think it's challenging. I think you're asked to walk in two worlds. Uh, That is the nature of the treaty partnership. All Māori in the public service have their own personal history, uh, their hapu, their iwi of their experiences of the Crown. Um, Some of our iwi didn't even sign the treaty. Uh, For some of us, we fought alongside Crown forces uh, during the land confiscations, uh, fighting the likes of Te Kōti. My marae, for instance, harboured Te Kōti and had to change our hapu name. So each public servant, Māori, brings with them their own history of colonisation, of urbanisation, and uh, always trying to work to see how they can walk in those two worlds and you know that makes me incredibly proud of my Māori colleagues in the New Zealand Public Service. Is Oranga Tamariki doing a good job? I think we are. Um, You know we've tried very hard to... How can you say that though? How can you say that in the face of some very damning reports? I can say that on the basis of the work that I have seen my team do, the relationships that they've built with iwi. Uh, We heard Tuhoi speak on the stand as part of their Waitangi Tribunal evidence about the work that they've done with us. I can't, in all honesty, speak to you, Lisa, and say that the work of my staff over the last four years has not been good. I think it's been excellent, but I think that shows the nature of the challenge that Oranga Tamadiki has, as well as other Crown agencies, to truly transform the system so that we don't have the sorts of experiences that Māori children and Māori whānau are having today. In terms of Gronia Moss, does she retain your confidence? Do you have complete confidence in her ability to lead this agency? Yes, I do. Um, But I'll also say that I am not the employer of chief executives in the public service. Uh, At the end of the day, it's the Public Services Commissioner who has to make that determination. Um, And um, my role is to fulfil my obligations to my chief executive, and that is still Gronje Moss. But you're at the top table, so you're witnessing things firsthand, and that's why I'm asking you. You're right in there doing this. So... Does she retain your confidence from what you have seen of how she operates in Oranga Tamariki? Yes, she does. Are you speaking to me freely? I mean, you are, after all, going to another public service job, so I just want to get this on the record. Is is this what you believe, and do you feel able to speak freely, given that you're still going to be in the employ of the government? Yes, I do. I feel freely uh, to be able to express my view, and that is my view. So when is your last day going to be? Uh, the 23rd of February, uh, and then I start with the Department of Internal Affairs on the 1st of March. So what level of confidence do you have in Oranga Tamariki transforming into the organisation it needs to be? So I think the government of the day will determine the transformation that's required. I think um, Minister Davis uh, has set out quite an ambitious agenda for the transformation of the organisation. Um, we're still engaging with him around the, the nature of the changes in detail that he would like to see being made. The sorts of things, though, that he's talking about, particularly around the sharing of power and resources with Māori, um, certainly is the vision that I know in my area we have been wanting to support and would support also the sort of capability that I've been trying to build within the organisation.
Why do you think it is that you have confidence in Gronje Moss, but the Minister seems unable to express any confidence in her? I'm not sure. I think that might be a question that you'd need to talk to um, Minister Davis about. Are you aware of any efforts to remove Gronje Moss from her job? No, I'm not. Really appreciate you speaking to me this evening. That's Hawani Lambert, who is um, the deputy of deputy chief executive of Oranga Tamariki. And as you heard there, he has resigned from his role, but says he retains confidence in Gronje Moss.